little, my mom used to put my hair in ponytails, and I was never able to put my own hair in ponytails, but as I got older, I realized that the elastic bands were really helpful in just slipping my arm through. It was the perfect size, so I use it for my hairbrush and my toothbrush, razors for shaving. When people ask me what happened to my hands, I love just saying random things just like, oh, pneumonia or um, smoking cigarettes or just, <laughs> just anything that doesn't make any sense is funny to me. I am a congenital amputee. I'm missing both my arms and my right leg. So I was born in Sarnia and uh, they told me that my birth defects were due to pollution. I didn't know anything beyond there was pollution in Sarnia and it was affecting the way babies were being born. Um, my parents didn't really know either. My mom worked in Sarnia at the time and she drove through Chemical Valley every day and uh, once I was born they had three geneticists come and uh, take samples of blood and hair and they sort of determined based on that that I was affected by pollution. Um, but it wasn't until recently that I actually started reading about it and figuring out, you know, how many people this is affecting and how the birth defects were, you know, largely determined by, by all the pollution. Chemical Valley is Ontario's pollution hotspot. Bordering Michigan are 62 large industrial facilities. And all of these plants are within 25 kilometers of the Sarnia area. Altogether, these plants account for 40% of Canada's petrochemical industry. So if you look over here, it's pretty crazy. Beautiful day, blue skies, super residential. Right over here across the river, we've got Chemical Valley. Pretty crazy to see that this is in some people's backyard. The three Canadian regions most affected by Chemical Valley's pollutants are Sarnia, the Amjuang First Nations community, and Karenna which is part of the St. Clair Township. Altogether, the Sarnia area is home to nearly 90,000 people. Out of these 62 industrial plants in the Sarnia area, five of them rank in the top 20 highest polluting facilities in Ontario. Ontario Power Generation ranks third in the province, while Imperial Oil ranks sixth, and Shell, tenth. The Sarnia area emits approximately 5.7 million kilograms of toxic air pollutants. These toxic emissions are almost as much as that produced in the entire province of New Brunswick. These pollutants are linked with reproductive, developmental, and respiratory problems, as well as cancer among humans. But Courtney isn't the only amputee whose disability is suspected to be a result of the pollutants in Chemical Valley. Amanda Fillion and her parents live in the Sarnia area. I was born missing um, the top part of my leg, so I wasn't born with the hip and socket joint, and uh, I just had a tibia, and I didn't have a femur. We let uh, people from our church know uh, family and everything beforehand, so everybody was prepared, so then when they did see her, it wasn't like a shock. You know, you always say, oh, how's the baby? And they start looking and, uh, you know, they still want to see what she looked like and, oh, what's this little leg look like? You know, so it wasn't um, upsetting. We didn't feel sorry for herself. We're very religious and we just took it all in stride. We've helped other families just by the way we look at life. So there's, it's all positive. My friend Courtney had written me and was asking me questions about where I was born and who, when my mom was pregnant with me and I was really confused where she was going until she started telling me about the research that people were looking into with how um, the chemical plants could affect me being an amputee and I guess I never really even had taken a moment to think of why I was even born this way. Now hearing these things um, it does make a lot of sense to me to know that I know other people in the neighborhood who are also amputees. So to put 
all those pieces together, it's like in that cartoon where like the light bulb goes off above your head, like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> that was sure. basically how it felt, like kind of being like, oh, and then there's him and then the other female. So I would say there was about four or five of us just in the same area of Sarnia. But Amanda and her family are divided on the issue of the well-being and safety of Sarnians. I belong to like a Facebook group for Lambton County that just gives out alerts for the area. And a lot of people went on there and were complaining about uh, the smell that was happening in Sarnia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it continued on to a lot of people saying they had burning eyes and itchy skin or all these other things. And it made me start thinking like, oh, well, even if the plants themselves weren't actually releasing what was happening, they just said everything was fine. And uh, to me, it was almost like one of those things where if they weren't even a part of this Facebook group, how would they even know about it right off the bat? And, you know, even if they heard an alert, would we just were so accustomed to it that it's just second nature? Would we even notice that the alert's happening? Or would we, you know, just we're going about our daily lives? When there were warnings in the last few years, on contrary to what Amanda said, uh, we're aware of it as a high school teacher, there'd be a warning and they shut the school and everybody stay in the school until afterwards. And that happened once in 15 years. So it's not very often. However, one community that does live in fear of plant warnings is the Amjuang First Nations Reserve. The Amjuang community's close proximity to Chemical Valley results in some of the most startling statistics surrounding health problems. Almost one quarter of the children who belong to the Amjuang First Nation have asthma. And 39% of Amjuang women have experienced a miscarriage or stillbirth. Meanwhile, for the babies that are born, only one male is born for every two females. The toxins also result in 16% of the community experiencing skin rashes such as eczema and psoriasis. The Sarnia Lambton Environmental Association is a non-profit organization that represents 19 of Sarnia's multinational companies. Dean Edwardson is the industry spokesperson. Uh, we want to be seen as a an organization that uh, is looking at the environment from a responsible standpoint uh, consistent with sustainable development. For example, if you want to look at our uh, volatile organic carbons, sulfur dioxide, um, I think you know there are distinct uh, improvements been made there just to, just to point to a few. If you look at our monitoring on water, for example, uh, more often than not you'll get a non-detect for anything in the water, and that's a you know, 365 day, 24-7 operation. The kind of association that we are, we're, we're an industrial association, we're always subject to criticism. Mm -hmm. We are who we are, and I make no apologies for that. We found an eco-justice study, so it's shown that asthma rates are 22% in children, and there are like a host of other problems such as ADD and, and a high miscarriage, there's still birth rates, kidney problems and emergency hospital visits um, due to the air pollution in the area. So we're just wondering like, if the companies are working towards lowering the pollution rates. I really think you have to look at where some of those statistics are coming from and whether they can be verified. Because if you look at the community health surveys that have been done in terms of cancer incident and birth ratios, we are not any different than what you find in Ontario. And, and those reports are available. So and it's important for to become aware of that. Yeah, just because I do know, like it was, it was in the same eco-justice study. It did say that it was a higher rate than, for instance, you know, London. Hamilton, I didn't know eco-justice was. Uh, I didn't know eco-justice was in the medical field. <laughs> we did speak with Dean Edwardson of okay. the Sarnia Lambton Environmental Association, and when we did present him with some statistics and facts from specifically the eco-justice report and the 2005 okay. report that you spoke of, yeah, he seemed to question the validity. A mm -hmm. lot of the statistics that we were giving him. They're kind of there to lobby for the position of industry to, you know, to keep the status quo, to be able to operate down there with minimal amount of regulation and oversight so they can maximize their, you know, their profit margins, that type of thing. That's what Sarnia Lampton Environmental Organization is about. They're really not a independent, unbiased organization by any means. And un I don't really know exactly what he's referring to because we haven't actually done any of our own research. We rely on published research, research that's coming out of, you know, academic publications or even 
local like regional organizations such as you know Lambton Lambton itself the county has done some studies um, and then of course the research that's been done by the Amgenog themselves so I'm not sure what he's referring to by the fact that uh, our, our facts are off or wrong. All of the facts in the Eco Justice Report are verified by sources like the Ontario Medical Association and the World Health Organization. EcoJustice also uses the National Pollutant Release Inventory, an online database operated by the Canadian government. But the problem is, this index doesn't include all 23,000 potentially harmful pollutants listed by Environment Canada. There are also no recent studies by the federal or provincial government about the health impacts Chemical Valley has on nearby communities. Ada Lockridge and Ron Blaine are two members of the Amjuan community who have conducted independent studies on the effects of air pollution. What I ask of you and everywhere else I go is how do we start to fix some of these problems? Because these are problems that don't have to do with our life a hundred years from now or two hundred years from now. These are the lives that are being impacted right now today. Ada and Ron have been working alongside Elaine McDonald and Justin Duncan of EcoJustice on what is called the Chemical Valley Charter Challenge. EcoJustice provides free legal services to charities and citizens working towards environmental justice nationwide. Together, they're challenging Ontario's Ministry of Environment over the cumulative impacts of pollution in Sarnia. Every single facility down there is being regulated like nothing else exists down there. So you look at the fence line around an individual petrochemical facility, they're being regulated like nothing else is next door to them or nothing else is being emitted. So they, they set standards based on what can be achieved by that individual facility at its fence line, not what else is going on in the, uh, the neighborhood. So to us, that's just an insane way of regulating. I mean, one of the things that we did when we first started this was to ask government to give us information about what's being emitted from all these plants. And they came back to us and said, we actually don't know. They, they don't know how many approvals have been granted, first of all, which is shocking because it's the Ministry of Environment that gives out the approvals. So they don't know how many over the last 60 years have been granted. Second of all, they don't know what the level of pollution has been granted under each of those approvals, so they don't know actually what's being emitted from all these facilities. After several attempts to contact the Ministry of Environment, we were unable to speak with a representative. We also contacted several Sarnia power plants. They declined to be interviewed. Our luck wasn't any better in Chemical Valley. Who are you with? Ryerson, Ryerson University. University. These students were working on a student dock for our capstone course. Just to let you know, I will be putting out a site watch and you'll be notified by the OPP for why okay. you're here taking photographs. Okay. Are we, like, we're not allowed to even be on a sidewalk? Yeah, I thought sidewalk was public property. Well, like I said, it's completely up to you how you want to play it. They frown upon it here, and like I said, the procedure here is to notify the OPP, and if you don't remove from my behalf, they come and remove you for me. Okay. It's completely up to you how you want to play it. Sure, we're okay. finished up here. You can understand it's pretty sensitive to people around today's day and age. For sure, yeah, no, that's kind of why we're doing the dock. I mean, we're just curious. Do you want to give me your name, or do you just want me to take, follow you and get your license plate number and your vehicle description? You can take you my to... name, if that's okay. Sarah Warren. So you're not allowed to film any, like anywhere in this entire area? No. If you go to any other plants on site, whether it's Lancis, Nova, you know, we're the same thing. Even on a on a sidewalk. Yeah. Why is that not allowed? Like I said, if you want, I can. Uh, like I said, I'll attach your name to the site watch. Yeah, we're just curious why. And yeah. like when, That's the, when the OPP notifies you, then you can ask him and he'll give you all the information you need. Are they good, like they're going to call me? Oh, definitely they will. Hi there, um, I would just like to file a complaint and I was just curious as to what my rights are as a citizen to be filming on uh, public property. Based off what you've told me, I have yet to see um, really anything you'd be violating. 
private security. They certainly don't have uh, powers of the police to, uh, to do anything about it. I, I would say it probably is, is, is in, the, in the realm of harassment. Some people have been pushing back against the placement of power plants. But it wasn't Sarnia residents who were fighting them. It was the people of Oakville. Minister, toxic pollutants are discharged into the air by gas-fired power plants. Children are particularly susceptible. Already in Halton, respiratory diseases are the number one reason children are admitted to our hospitals. Yet this power plant will be in an overtaxed airshed within two kilometers of approximately 16 schools and 5,000 homes. I have listened to the people of Oakville, and I agree with them. Will you listen to the people of Oakville, change your mind, and move the location of this power plant? And where did that power plant go? You guessed it, Sarnia. It's probably a good news, bad news story. As you know, we have a rather substantial power plant locally that um, I feel and this is a personal opinion, not an association opinion, I feel could have been converted to natural gas at considerably less cost, uh, produce more power, still employ more people, and have less impact on the environment. People who can afford to fight this tooth and nail in Oakville were able to get rid of it, but the people who've been struggling for much longer to get attention in Sarnia and in Amgenong specifically, got no attention and they're getting saddled with this with this gas plant now. Nobody wakes up in the morning to say, let's go see how we can mess up the world today. And it just isn't part of the operating practice. Companies are recognizing they need to do things uh, even outside of what the regulations require. With or without the government, may, um, we're hoping it will improve and uh, we keep watching the situation down there So and keep pushing for it. We would like to do a comprehensive um, um, health study for this region to deal with the issues, the inferences that you just claim. Or the question for me is, is anybody going to look at cumulative effects of the air pollution? And the, the answer is probably no, um, because they don't have the resources and the political capital to fight it. Justice delayed is justice denied. So for now, Chemical Valley won't be going anywhere. Amanda still lives in the Sarnia area. Everyone's that I'm close to, it's always been in their lives, so it's not anything that uh, we've thought twice about because when we look one way, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's and stunning. it's beautiful to come down and take a walk and visit. And, um, you know, you turn around and you see other things, and I guess you just leave your back to it sometimes. <laughs> but when you do look at it, you do really, um, I don't know, myself. I look up and I think it is kind of sad to see all that stuff going up in the air and um, on a day like today, like I don't see a single cloud in the sky and all I really see is the stuff coming out of the smokestack. So it kind of makes you wonder a little bit, but um, past that, I guess I, ha I like to stare at the water. <laughs> Courtney now lives in Toronto and works as a writer and comedian but she often thinks about those still living in her hometown near Chemical Valley. Unfortunately, someone else's profit margin is getting more priority than people's health. Ignoring it is not helping. There are people who are suffering, there are people who are getting sick, there are people who are being born with um, life-threatening conditions and way worse than me. I'm, I, th I find myself to be very fortunate um, given the circumstances and just the amount of cancer and, you know, other kind of ailments that are resulting from this issue and so I think it's important for people who are involved to be honest with themselves, to take a look at the population of your city and and just weigh the pros and cons, like what are we doing here, how many people are being affected and is is this worth it? Are they, is the health and safety of, of your city um, being jeopardized by what's going on here?